Hey, 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 we're Andy Orton Fan 2011. I'm back for race number 13 of 24 in Season 1 of Division 1 of the NASCAR Pepsi Cup Series. We've reached the brickyard, guys. We're here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the Aaron Williams 400. As you know of, Aaron Williams did get his race name on the race. Did get his, he got his name on the race name because he won the All-Star Race earlier this season. I'm not going to waste any time going through the starting grid because I need to save up some space on my computer. So... As you can see right, as you can see in the qualifying results, the 43 Dylan Poteet will start on the pole. And then I'll go through the top three in points. The 99 Arsenal Plant will start in the third position. The 8 of Trent Dunham will start seventh. And as we see in the starting grid, the the our points leader, the 61 Aaron Williams, will start back in 29th. And I'll speed through this as we get ready to start race number 13 of 24 in season one. With those famous Drivers, words in motorsports. Start your engines. That was a little off, uh, off timing, but whatever. So the race is 16 laps, and of course, again, lap number eight is your halfway point. Hopefully, we won't see a caution like we did in. Hopefully we see a caution-free race like we did in Daytona. But remember, these, there's a lot of drivers here, a lot of drivers who are looking for their first win and even more who are looking just looking for a good finish. As you can see, the 84 of Alex Tanker is one of them. He is looking for at least a top 10 finish to get back on track inside the top 20. And the 4-3 of Dylan Poteet, he currently does not have a top five finish. His best finish is sixth at this point, but He's got a great chance to uh, make that up here at Indy with four races to go in the season, in the regular season. The green flag's in the air, and we're underway in the Aaron Williams 400 here at Indianapolis. And as they, and as they come off turn one, Dylan Poteet leads the field, and coming into turn two. But we're gonna see some action from the back of the pack. Oh, we got trouble. We got trouble. Trouble off turn two. Oh, a lot of cars get involved in that wreck. There we see a few cars. A few cars got involved. A lot of cars. Some cars, actually. Let's see what happens. All right, there you see. There you see the 901 of Adam Chambers coming to turn two. And he tries to fall in line, tries to get a draft off the 72 of Soren Tahari. And he just couldn't clear the 81 of Luke Schaefer. And Chambers is going to go for a ride onto the Schaefer barrier on the outside wall. And there you see, oh, there you see the 83 Sam at Austin, just with nowhere to go. For Carlos Martinez, the 7 of Nick Guerra, they get through it. And then a few other cars end up getting involved. There you see those cars that were stuck in the outside lane. The 36 of Nick Bergen is slow, then the 60 of Monica Kowalski, the 21 of Vili Vertinen. And then something happens near the back of the pack, I think. And just like that, a caution, just like that. A caution's out on lap one of, of the Aaron Williams 400. And it just happens so fast, just so fast, that you just, everything just goes away like that. It just happens so fast right in front of you. So a wreck off turn two brings out our first caution of the race. And as we were going to try and... Now we're going to check out the race to start finish line. As you know here in NASCAR um, Racing 2003, NASCAR Racing 2003 season, they um, they do not use the, the timing lines here, so instead they race back to the line to determine who will lead the first lap. And Dylan Poteet in the 43 is going to lead the first lap. So he will get one bonus point. There you see some car there you see three cars who were involved in that earlier wreck are now out of the race. The 91 of Adam Chambers, the 83 of Sam Madoskin, and the 11 of Luke Walker. They are out of the race. 
and we have not gotten the one to go from the pace car so we will take a short break and we'll be right back to bring you more coverage of the Aaron Williams 400 here in the NPCS channel. Let's check out our top 10 at this point in the race. As you can see right now, we'll start from the 10th. 56 Nicole Sanchez is in 10th, then the 88 Rachel Williams, then the 5 Alexander Jones, the 1 of Matthew McMurray, the 84 of Alex Tanker, the 39 of Red Bell, the 24 of Seth Cole, the 8 of Trent Dunham is in 3rd, the 99 of Austin Plant in 2nd, and the 43 of Dylan Poteet is currently your leader. The pace car is going to hit pit road. Um, we are going to get back underway here at Indianapolis with the restart on lap six. And the green flag is back in the air for the restart. As you see Dylan Poteet is still your leader at this point. He could certainly use a good finish in this race as he's on the fence with those, he's on the fence with the wild card spots. And it looks like I think we might have we might have another caution. But I think we're gonna but we're gonna check out the race to the start finish line first. You see the 4-3 Dylan Poteen now stuck in the high side. Now he bounces off the wall, the LaPlante bounces off the wall, and now the Aatron Dunham's gonna take the lead. Well, we've had so many cars. Oh, we got trouble. We now we got trouble off turn four. So Trent Dunham is going to lead the field to the yellow, as we're going to try and find out what happened on the caution. All right, here's the first caution that came out that I just know of. There you see the 21 of William Vertinen running along the 36 of Nick Bergen. Bergen tries to uh. Tries to go back on the outside line, but he runs out of room and hits the outside wall. And Bergen's going to go for quite a ride there, but I think we might have something else that might have happened near the near the middle of the pack. We're going to see if we can get a bird's eye view from here. Yeah, we get it as we check out from our bird's eye view from the blimp. You see, it looks like looks like the 31 of Trevor Thompson gets into the 42 of Jake Baskinger. Baskinger gets loose and then goes for a ride onto the apron. And wow, what what a save by by Thompson and Baskinger. Both both of those guys were great saves coming off turn two as they got loose. Let's check that out again in real time. There you see those two get loose. What a save. But then we had more, then we had more trouble. Then then there's the third wreck. Three wrecks in already one lap. Here we see it starts right around here near the middle of the field. Coming off turn three. There you see the 42 Jake Baskinger is going to hit the wall. He collects his double zero of Phil Jones alongside. The 16 of Dylan Young is going to go for a ride. Then the 81 of Luke Schaefer is going to spin out. Coming off turn three. And then you see these cars near the back. Try and get through it. 31 Trevor Thompson got a piece of the double zero. The 42 Jake Baskinger is going to get through it. Boy, the... Uh, the, double, the 07 of Paul Winterbottom barely got through it, and so did, as well as the 4 of Carlos Martinez. And there you see the rest of these cars who are in the back of the pack. Oh, then oh, and the 7 of Nick Garrett gets into the 17 of Ashley Young. And both of those cars, that's going to slow up the that's going to slow up the rest of the field. That's going to slow up the rest of the field on the inside as you see the 19 of Matthew Rodriguez with nowhere to go. 29 of Joshua Perry gets through on the outside. So does the 10 of Ryan Cooper. Oh, but then they hit the... Oh, but they don't make it in turn four. So Joshua Perry and Ryan Cooper get into turn four as Aaron Williams and Dougie Shears in the 61 and 94 respectively get through on the inside. We're going to try and find out 
what happened with Cooper and Perry as they were coming into turn three. They see Perry bounces off the wall, and as they try and get through the wreck, right about here. Oh, oh man, what a hard hit. Joshua Perry get just hits just hits hard onto that safer barrier. And he collects a tenant Ryan Cooper along with him, and then nowhere to go for the double zero Aaron's dream machine of Phil Jones. Looks like the 12 car Brayton might have gotten a piece of it. Looks like he's done for this race. So yet another caution. Yet another caution at this point. As, well, just just so happens that a lot of these things happen. But that's racing for you. And then we might have seen some, a third wreck occur. Because there was some smoke going on near the, uh, there was some smoke near the, near this part of the racetrack. Oh, there it is. Let's check this out. There you see the 72 Soren Tahari. And the 33 Courtney Wilson tries to fall back in line and just nowhere to go for the 33 Wilson. And she's going to go for a ride. And all the cars are going to pass her on the outside. 31 Trevor Thompson, the 6 of Petra London. And Wilson manages to save it without, without um, much damage. So, five big wrecks. So, five, five wrecks in one lap. Well, you don't see that shit every day, but we, we're seeing a we're seeing a whole we're seeing a hell of a lot of things right now. As we take a, as we take a short break, we'll be right back for for more coverage of the Aaron Williams 400. So, as you can see at this point, the bottom nine in the field are currently out of the race. That is the 12, the 10, the 29, the 17, the 60, and the 81. They have all been added to those who get a DNF. And we'll go through our top five at this point, right before we take the restart. The five, Alexander Jones in fifth, the one, Matthew McMurray in fourth, the 84 of Alex Tanker in third, the 24 of Seth Cole in second, and the eight of Trent Dunham is currently your leader. As we are ready to uh, get back to racing here in the restart on lap 11. The green flag is back in the air, and we have six laps to go. As they head off turn one, Dunham with the lead. The 24 of Seth Cole right behind him, but Seth Cole is looking for his first win of the season, as well as the 84 of Alex Tanker. Oh, we got more, we got more, we got more! We got more wrecks near the back of the pack. As we're gonna check out the, the race of the start finish line. The 24 of Seth Cole currently with the lead, coming into turn three. And Dunham's gonna bounce off the wall. And Cole's gonna bounce off the wall. Oh! And they go. Oh! Oh my god! Oh my god. Oh my god, Seth Cole. That is not that is not a good sign for this 24 team. Oh my god. Let's go on board him. There you see, he's gonna bounce off the outside wall. He tries to stay in it. And oh my god. What a hard hit. What a hard hit by Seth Cole. Right right with the barrier between between the track and pit road. Oh my god. We just got a word. He is a uh, he has suffered a um just got word from NASCAR he has he has only suffered a minor concussion. But he says that he is okay, so that is some good news right there. But at this point, we're gonna have to see. Well, that's just one of the big wrecks that happened on this on this lap, on this lap right here. As you see, there was some trouble near the back of the pack. So let's see. Let's check out what happens. Right there, right there, you see the 39 of Red Bell get into the outside wall, and then the 26 Andrew Jimenez gets into her, and then, and then this is what started the caution. The 72 of Soren Tahari hits the uh, 
hits the safer barrier, and then he goes for a ride. He's sideways, and he's going to spin out. And then all these cars are going to try and pass on the inside, and some, a few more on the outside. The 31 Trevor Thompson gets through. The 77 and the 6 get through it. Then all these cars are going to try and try and make it through. And then Aaron Williams, our points leader in the 61. Ouch. Going to take a hard hit right there. And then another hard hit on the double zero of the Aaron's Dream Machine of Phil Jones. That is not what Aaron Williams wanted to see in this race. After a big win at Daytona, he's going to be out. He's going to be out of this one. That is not what this 61 team wanted to see. And there you see the 94 of Dougie Shears and the 9 of Charles Jackson also involved. There you see the 2 of Jack Richards is going to take a small hit right here near the front, near his front fender. So the big news is our points leader is as good as wrecked. And he is going to take a huge hit in the points. And there you see our running order at this point. But now we're going to take a look. We're going to take another look. But we haven't checked out the run to the start finish line. We all we know that the Ada Trent Dunham was the leader. We know the Ada Trent Dunham was the leader. We're going to show you right we're going to show you right here Dunham's going to bounce off the wall. And then right and then you see right in front of him you see right in front of him, right right around here. The 24 Seth Cole is going to bounce off that safer barrier. The 84 of Alex Tanker is going to go along with alongside him. There you see, right there. Right, that didn't want to stop. Didn't want to. We're going to, we're going to move this back frame by frame. You see right there, the 24 Seth Cole with that hard hit on the barrier between between the track and pit road. And then you see the Ada Trent Dunham overtake 84 of Alex Tanker on the back on the front stretch. And then the 84 of Alex Tanker is just gonna go fast enough to block Matthew McMurray heading to the start finish line. So a lot of big wrecks here in this race. But you know, that's NASCAR. And some people just some apparently just some people just watch NASCAR for the crashes. Well, there's your crash fest for you. There's your wreck fest for you. As we are under caution, we will we'll take a short break and we'll continue with more coverage of the Aaron Williams 400 here in Randy Orton Fan 2011 channel. So as we get back to um to one a one lap shootout, there you see 21 cars, half the field. That's right, half the field is left in this one lap shootout. Half the field is left in this one lap shootout. As you see, you see all these cars, 24 Seth Cole with that hard hit. He's out of the race. The 48 Christopher Martin somehow is out of this race as well. There's you see more cars. The 61 Aaron Williams is out of this one as he got involved in that earlier wreck coming off turn two. And guys, we don't see this often in NASCAR, but it's time for a one lap shootout to determine a winner here in the Aaron Williams 400. And as we get set to go for one more restart, the, the white flag is in the air, the green flag and the white flag is in the air. As we set for a one lap shootout and whatever happens now, happens. So it's checkers or wreckers at this point. Can the Ada Trent Dunham come up with a second win of the season? Can the five Alexander Jones come up with her third win of the season? It looks like the five Alexander Jones wants to, uh, she wants to win. She wants to win badly. She's got the inside. Two more corners to go. Who's gonna win it? But anything can happen now. Dunham's gonna bounce off the wall. And, and the five Alexander Jones is gonna clear all of that, but Jones will bounce off the wall as well. But it looks like she's gonna have enough speed to win the Aaron Williams 400. 
And a close race for second place between, between Rachel Williams and Justin Perry. Rachel Williams will take the second spot. Justin Perry will get his best finish of the season in third. And there you see the final results. There you see the final results. Alexandra Jones is going to come up with her third win of the season. Alexandra Jones with her third win of the season. And there you see the rest of the car, the rest of the, the finishing order. The 88 Rachel Williams. She comes up with her best finish of the season in second. The third of Justin Perry. The third finishing third is the 18 of Justin Perry. He comes up with his best finish of the season in third. The 14 of Alexander Dawson with a good um a good fin a good top five run here in in the 14 car, finishing fourth. The 25 of Jake Cole comes up with his best finish of the season in fifth. Then the one of Matthew McMurray, gonna, he's going to come up with his best finish of the season in 6th. The 84 of Alex Tanker finally gets a top 10. He finishes 7th. The 99 of Austin LaPlante probably is going to take that points lead now as he finishes 8th. Then the 8 of Trent Dunham finishes 9th. The 33 of Courtney Wilson rounds out your top 10. Then as we go through the rest of the cars that actually finish the race, 10th through 21st, I mean 11th through 21st, we have the 39 of Red Bull, the 4 of Carlos Martinez, Oh, you see the 33 Courtney Wilson barely beat barely beat the 39 Red Bell by seven one thousandths of a second to get that that final spot in the top ten. Then we have um, the four Carlos Martinez, the 16 of Dylan Young finishes 13th, the 42 of Jake Baskinger 14th, the 43 of Dylan Poteet 15th, the 31 of Trevor Thompson 16th, the 56 of Nicole Sanchez 17th, the 21 of Billy Burton in 18th, the 36 of Nick Bergen finishes 19th, the, the 9 of Charles Jackson in 20th, and finally the 72 of Soren Tahari. Those are the guys that finished the race. And unfortunately, only half the field made it to the end. There you see the bottom half of the field, and it's not pretty. It's not a pretty picture. Too many wrecks in this race. But hey, that's racing for you. So as you take a look at all the, the bottom half of the field that basically got all got DNFs, the 2 of Jack Richards, the 19 of Matthew Rodriguez, the 48 Christopher Martin, the 24 of Seth Cole, the 26 of Andrea Jimenez, the 77 of Lisa Shears, the 6 of Pichu London, the 07 of Paul Winterbottom, the 61 of Aaron Williams. Going to take a huge hit in the points. Our points leader, well, I can probably say now former points leader. Maybe. I'm not quite sure. Well, we'll but you'll see if he still has the points lead at this point in the standings. But I, I don't, but I'm pretty sure that points, if he still has the points lead, it's pretty small now. Then we go through the bottom 12, the 7 of Nick Guerra, the double zero of Phil Jones, the 94 of Dougie Shears, the 81 of Luke Schaefer, the 60 of Monica Kowalski, the 17 of Ashley Young, the 29 of Joshua Perry, then the 10 of Ryan Cooper, the 12 of Connor Breeden, the 91 of Adam Chambers, the 83 of Sam Adoskin, and the 11 of Luke Walker. That is the bottom half of the field getting all DNFs for the race. So, a crash fest, another crash fest race. A crash field race gives Alexander Jones her third win of the season. And I bet you I bet you Aaron Williams is not gonna happy to go on a date with her. I'm not quite sure. But hey, but hey, when you uh I guess that's good redemption after uh after you wreck your own girlfriend in Denver two races ago in, in Denver two races ago, but hey it's it's all good I guess. So congratulations to the five Alexander Jones coming up with her third win of the season and barely beating Rachel Williams and Justin Perry to the line. An unbelievable finish to a fun-filled race. So guys, that's all That's all with the coverage that we got here from Indy. Stay tuned for your standings. Just an announcement before, uh, before I announce the standings. As you can see in this message, the 26, the 33, and the 81 of Andrea Jimenez, Courtney Wilson, and Luke Schaefer those drivers have failed post-race inspection in the Aaron Williams 400. So because of that, all three drivers will lose 10 points towards the season, and at the same time, they will incur a strike on their records. And that's going to change the uh, point standings a little bit as I announce the standings in just a few moments. So now we take a look at our standings after 13 races, after the Aaron Williams 400. As you can see now in the point standings, we have a new points leader. Yep, because of the DNF by Aaron Williams and a top 10 by Austin LaPlante, Austin LaPlante has now taken over the points lead by 17 points over Aaron Williams. A top 10 by Trent Dunham keeps him in the third spot, 
A despite a DNF by Seth Cole, he moves up one spot into fourth. Rachel Williams with a second place finish moves to fifth. The win by Alexandra Jones moves her up a spot into sixth. The, the, the DNF by Luke Schaefer and and with him failing post race inspection, he moves down three spots into seventh. Alexander Dawson with a top five finish moves him up three spots into eighth. And for Dylan Poteet and Dylan Young, they have also done well in this race. They move into the top ten in ninth and tenth, respectively. And remember, guys, these are the automatic qualifying. These are the automatic qualifying playoff berths, the top ten. So this is where you want to be after sixteen races. Now we take a look at 11th through 20th after this race. As you can see, Courtney Wilson, did, after a top 10 finish, but she did fail post-race inspection, so she will lose three positions, outside, fall outside the top 10, and move down to 11th. And Red Bell, who despite an 11th place finish, she will lose two spots and fall outside the top 10 into 12th. As you can see, I have updated the standings for the wild card spots. Just remember that 11th and 12th, Automatically make the playoffs, but they will still be considered wild card. Um, and they'll still be considered wild cards. And from 13th through 20th, I'll take the the three drivers with the most wins, podium finishes, top fives, top tens, and so on. And then I will vote in one driver, the league administrator. That's me. I will vote in one driver out of out of the remaining five eligible to make the playoffs. As you can see. Despite a bad finish by Christopher Martin, he moves down outside the top 12, outside the automatic qualifying spots, but he currently holds the first seed in the wild card. Alex Tanker, with his first top 10, moves up 11 spots into the top 15, moves up to 14th place. Ashley Young with a DNF moves down four spots into 15th. Trevor Thompson with a DNF moves down a spot into 16th. Nicole Sanchez with a bad finish moves down one spot into 17th. Jake Baskinger with a solid finish moves him up two spots into 18th. Jake Cole with his first top five of the season moves him up seven spots into the top 20 with not into 19th. And Matthew McMurray with a decent finish. One sec, that's my phone. Matthew McMurray with a decent finish moves him up three spots into the top 20 into 20th. And as you can see, Christopher Martin would be the first wildcard seed as he currently has a win at this point. Jake Baskinger would be number two as he has a podium finish. And then finally, Ashley Young would be number three. As if you don't know, Ashley Young and Nicole Sanchez have the same amount of top fives, but Ashley Young does have more top tens. She has four. Young has four versus Sanchez, who has three. So Young would get the final wildcard spot. Just remember, guys, there are still three races to go, so these this these standings are not final until the, until race number sixteen in the play in in the regular season. So remember, guys, anything can happen, and it's not over till it's over. Now we take a look at twenty first through thirtieth. As you can see, Andrea Jimenez with a bad finish and failing post race inspection. She loses three spots, falls outside the top 20 into 21st. She currently has two strikes on her record, and she cannot afford another strike because if she does incur another strike this season, she will be suspended for a set number of races. Justin Perry, with a, a podium finish, is going to move up six spots into 22nd. Sam Adolskin, with a DNF, he will move down six spots outside the top 20 into 23rd. Connor Breton, with a DNF, moves down three spots into 24th. Jack Richards with a DNF falls to 25th. Luke Walker with a dead last finish moves down 7 spots into 26th. Dougie Shears with a DNF will fall 5 spots into 27th. Matthew Rodriguez with a poor showing moves down a spot into 28th. Peach London with a decent finish moves him up 2 spots into 29th inside the top 30. And Joshua Perry will move down a spot into 30th and he will currently occupy the last spot in the top 30 at this point. Just remember, guys, the 12 drivers outside the top 30 after the happy birthday NASCAR Racing 2002 500, that is not until the first race of the playoffs, must qualify on time for the Pizza 500. But just remember, that's a few races away, so anything can happen at this point. Now let's take a look at the bottom 12. Ryan Cooper with a DNF falls outside the top 30 into 31st. As you can see, Don LaPride has done serving a suspension after a having illegal parts in a qualifying run. He will be back in the next race. Charles Jackson stays put in 33rd. Lisa Shears moves up to 34th. Jacob Rodriguez falls a spot to 35th. And Nicholas Guerra, Adam Chambers, Nick Bergen, 
They stay, they stay put. Carlos Martinez moves up a spot. Jake Rogers moves down a spot to 39th and 40th. And Jeff Ellers and Jake Harrigs will stay put. As you can see, the bottom five now. Nick Bergen down. Uh, Nick Bergen from down. Well, from Nick Bergen down, actually. My, my bad. From Nick Bergen down, those, guys, those drivers have been eliminated from playoff contention at this point in the season. I will keep, you know, continue to update the standings as the regular season starts to wind down. So stay updated with the standings, guys. And as we take a look at our part-time driver standings, Vili Vertsinen has moved into the lead at this point by one point over Paul Winterbottom, the Aussie, as both Winterbottom and Soren Zahari lose a spot in the standings. Phil Jones and Monica Kowalski currently stay put at this point in the season. And remember, the part-time driver with the most points at the end of Season 1 will automatically become a full-time driver in Season 2. Just remember, I do plan on changing the mod for the... I do plan on changing the mod for Season... for Division 1, so... I will... I've decided not to, uh, for the driver to keep his ride, I will just instead give him a random ride in Season 2. So, with three races to go in the regular season, the, uh... The race to the chase is going to be much, much more, uh, interesting as we head towards the end of the regular season, as our next race is the Rogers Communications 300 in Toronto International Raceway. That's right, guys. We're going north of the border. We're going to the Great White North, known as Toronto, Ontario, Canada, a.k.a. the center of the universe. So, guys, stay tuned for that. And remember, if you want updates on the series, make sure you subscribe. That's it, guys. I'm out. See you in Toronto.